Hi there. It's still April 30th, but we're going to do Proverbs 31 because there is no April 31. So let's get to that. This will be the last time we use the Living Bible, which I'm actually glad with because I really didn't like the way they paraphrase some of the things. But we'll get into it. 31 is, um, you know, these weren't written by Solomon, but these are the wise sayings of, of King Lemuel of Massa talked to him at his mother's knee by his mother. Hmm. First 10 verses anyway, or the first nine verses. And there's some important stuff in here too. We'll see how they put it. Oh, my son, who, whom I have dedicated to the Lord, do not spend your time with women, the royal pathway to destruction. The royal pathway to destruction. Hmm. Whom I have dedicated. What my son, what my son of my womb, and what son of my vows. They kind of really simplified that, didn't they? Do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. And it is not for kings, O Lemuel, to drink, stop it, to drink wine and whiskey. For if they drink, they may forget their duties and be unable to give justice to those who are oppressed. Hard liquor is for sick men at the brink of death and wine for those in deep depression. Let them drink and forget their poverty and misery. Okay. And that's important, okay? These these world leaders, they should not be drinking, okay? They shouldn't be. Because if they get drunk, they will be easily taken advantage of by some wicked advisor or something. Hmm? Well, let's read that over here. Four through seven. It is not for kings of the mule, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire intoxicating drink. Otherwise, they will drink and forget what is decreed and pervert the rights of all the needy. Give intoxicating drink to one who is perishing and wine to one whose life is bitter. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. So, yes, drinks are for, you know. Oh, we can. You're working hard, a hard working. You're poor, you're barely making it by, and you can, and you have a six pack. And you know what? We're not going to get drunk, but we're going to drink, and we're going to have some friends over, and and we're going to forget our troubles for a while. You know, it says that's okay. Hmm? It only says for kings and rulers not to drink. Hmm? We're saying you should defend those who cannot help themselves. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless, and see that they get justice. Right. If you can find a, a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems, right? Her husband can trust her and she will richly satisfy his needs. She will not hinder him, but help him all her life. Okay, now this, we're going to stop there and start over. This part, the rest 10 through 31, is an acrostic poem that wasn't written by, you know, wasn't written by King Lemuel's mother. It was older than that. It's one that she taught to him as a nurse, like you would teach a nursery rhyme that was written hundreds of years ago. This was a nursery rhyme, okay? It speaks about an excellent wife or woman. It was written acrostically, which means it was ABCs back then. It used each letter in the Hebrew alphabet su successively. You know, A is for you know, apple, B is for banana, C is for kumquat, you know, or cucumber, and D is for, you know, whatever. It, that kind of a thing. Okay. Women aren't expected to live up to every single thing on here. Okay. It was an acrostic poem. Okay. Telling you all the different attributes of a good wife. So. Okay. And it begins at verse 10. They didn't see, they, they separated it over here in the thing. We will, we will read the paraphrase of it and see how, what they did to it, okay? If you can find a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems. Her husband can trust her and she will richly satisfy his needs. She will not hinder him but help him all her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She, she buys imported foods brought by ship from distant ports. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plans the day's work for her servant girls. She goes out to inspect the field and buys it with her own hands and she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and hard worker and watches for bargains. She works far into the night. 
She sews for the poor and generously helps those in need. She has no fear of winter for her ho- for her household, for she has made warm clothes for all of them. <clears throat> she also upholsters with finest tapestry. Her own clothing is beautifully made, a purple gown of pure linen. Her husband is well known, for he sits in the council chamber with other civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments to sell to the merchants. Hmm. She's a woman of strength and dignity who has no fear of old age. When she speaks, her words are wise, and kindness is in the rule of everything she says. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. Her children stand and bless her. So does her husband. He praises her with these words. There are many fine women in the world, but you are the best of them all. Okay, and this is a charm can be deceptive and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears and reverences God shall be greatly praised. I always like that verse 30. Maybe you'll go here, it's probably highlighted over here too. Nope, that's not. Hmm. Praise her for the many fine things she does. These good deeds of her shall bring her honor and recognition from people of importance. Really give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Right. That means when people see her coming, though, they, they'll recognize her and they'll say, ah, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So there you go. That's 31. I don't think I need to read that in, in the New American Standard. But it is just a poem. It says all the qualities of a good wife. I don't think any wife is expected to have every one of those qualities, okay? Okay, being an upholsterer and by a wine field and, you know, good attributes. So, there you have it. That's Proverbs 31. We have finished another month of of our Proverbs study. Tomorrow we're going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing this for probably a couple years at least. And tomorrow we're going to start another another version. I'm not sure which one yet, but it won't be a paraphrase, <laughs> okay? But it'll be a version we haven't done yet. Just always want to get a different take and, and always compare it parallel side by side with a genuine word for word that you know they haven't turned around. So, but until next time, stay tuned later today for Through the Bible in One Year. We're still studying about David. Okay, but until then, we'll see you tomorrow for a brand new version of Proverbs. See ya.